Today is October 29th, 2019. And there is a series of storms that have come to Denver, Colorado. And since moving here, I've never seen as much fluctuation in weather as I have here. Um, other places that I've lived before, they say that the weather changes constantly, but Denver, in my opinion, definitely holds that crown. And the reason why that's important is to understand that just around the bend could be a big snowstorm and just around the bend could be 80 degree sunshine. Uh, could be a hailstorm, could be a thunderstorm. And in Colorado, the thunderstorms are not just the ones that I'm used to in Los Angeles where something, you know, lightning shoots every now and then. You could, like an IMAX movie, have thunder surrounding you, meaning multiple um, thunder strikes or lightning strikes uh, all around you and uh, multiple times a second. I've never seen anything like it before. And I believe with the idea of life as metaphor that we talk about, that God has put us in this situation just as he did many of the prophets of the Old Testament to actually physically live out certain aspects of life or see uh, certain aspects like the clay and the pot and the almond tree and any of these things in order to help us from a metaphor or from an analogy understand God, understand ourselves, understand our purpose in life understand the sign of the times and to both know that there is this promise with a price attached and there's also a punishment with a preview attached we begin to realize that we're in a fork in the road moment in history that could either swing up really well or swing down really, really bad. And again, ultimately, regardless of where we are in history, we know that our lives are this preview, this choice between good and evil, between our eternal destiny of heaven or hell. But in covering our crazy mission and covering the behind the scenes of our Nakani Caps family and scientific discovery, I realize it's important to talk about these things because oftentimes people think that they have prayer or they have confession or they have even baptism for like Constantine their back pocket they can just pull it out the last second anointing of the sick any type of, of thing where they can hit that snooze button and say like Saint Augustine did you know make me a saint but just not right now you have a lot of Catholics that joke about that like haha isn't that funny that Saint Augustine said that that really really underscores how much people don't understand the severity of sin, don't understand that we are not promised the next day as Jesus repeatedly talked about, as the Old Testament writings of the grass and the flowers withering. And it's something that I didn't understand until friend of the family was murdered in a 
home invasion. And once that happened, I think it's something I didn't understand until I heard a series of stories, some with people that I knew with sudden deaths. And you very quickly realize that you're not promised tomorrow. And not only are you not promised tomorrow and enjoy life and enjoy today, but many people use that you only live once mentality for sin. It's their bucket list. And people don't realize you only live once is you only live once to cast your vote on your eternal destiny. When St. Augustine did that, that was a grave sin, spurning God, is not something to be joked about in talks. It's something to be pitied just as St. Paul persecuting the Christians is something to be um, pitied, to be avoided. When we see it in our own lives, it's not something for us to joke about. Heaven and hell is not something to joke about. We would not have put our family and ourselves in such tremendous struggle and risk if this was something that we thought everybody could just live their lives and then eventually come to some truth that um, they feel is appropriate. There's one way, there's one Christ. And it's moments like today, with the risk of how dangerous the driving can be, and the next day how it could be clear, clear highways and safer, and we still don't know. You could be in a safe, sunny day and you can still die in a car accident. You can be in the most treacherous situations, but by the grace of God, be protected. Our human devices will not protect us, even in sunshine. And God's divine providence can protect us even in the most challenging of weather. But if we don't understand this and we think that we can separate natural law from divine law, and we think we can live our lives off of natural principles, and then occasionally when those don't work out and we feel a lack of power or a lack of love, we can then appeal to divine law. Scripture is very clear that God will not hear us in those moments, save for a true contrite heart. So this is something that we're going to be talking about more and uh, including the ideas of obedience to God, but obedience to God that is both loving and merciful as well as the bearer of our fate and will judge us at the end. We have to hold both on to those sides because it is popular these days to separate out one or the other, just like it's popular to separate out natural law or divine law and um, focus on one or the other or go back and forth when we feel it's right. So you frown today to me you do And the house by the lake And I, I won't complain You never met my mate We hooked up and one of those clubs We used to Songs and wine, rules of Sunday nights make me feel blue. And why, if 